So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get going. This is going to be a foreshortened um, tutorial today. Um, it's, it's going to focus on this issue of um, values, variables that hold values, and expressions that compute values. Okay. Um, so what is a value in Java? Um, a value is one of the most critical um, sort of concepts um, that we have in mind when we, um, when we come to understand Java as a programming language. Um, a value is a, a single quantity, can't be further evaluated. It's kind of an irreducible uh, quantity. And it comes in many flavors. As we say, it's drawn from many different types. A type sort of characterizes a universe of possible values. And, and they would be uh, things like integers. You could have an integer value drawn from things like 2 minus 10 plus 33. Um, floating point values, things like 2.5, 3.14, 159. You know things that are that are have decimal points with them, um, and uh, those those particularly in Java are, are uh, predominant as double precision values. Characters like a, b, c, etc. Boolean uh, Boolean values, true or false, and then importantly references to objects that are instances of classes. The last tutorial we talked about um, how we can have classes which denote things like personhood or stringhood, and then there can be instances of them. And uh, I give the analogy that um, there can be a, a cookie cutter, and it can cut many particular cookies, and they'll all share certain characteristics. So all instances of a given class will share certain behavioral features, things you can do with them, certain properties that they have, but they will be um, uh, different in their particulars. They'll differ in their details. Um, the particular uh, values that they'll uh, have associated with subpieces. And one of the most important types of values that we'll see again and again, in which we saw last time, was references. Um, these references, as we discussed last time, point to or refer to some more complex um, construct. Maybe it's a person. Um, and uh, by using these, we can, for example, ask that person to perform an action, or we could read a value from, from the characteristics of the person, etc. Now, why are we talking about values? Well, it turns out values are central to how Java operates. Um, they, uh, they're the quantities any logic needs to do its job with respect to um, you know, what's in parameters or, or the rates used in rate transitions, or, or with respect to the, uh, the quantities used to to specify, you know, how long a model runs or what have you, um, how frequently an event is to fire off, etc. Um, there's a thing that computes values called an expression, and really this is kind of like a formula. You could think of it as a formula. That'd be a kind of a more colloquial way to put it. But the technical term is expression. And occasionally you'll see that in any logic. Um, so a Java expression is a little bit of code that evaluates to it, produces, it calculates, it computes a value, okay? typically based on other values. So it's like a formula. And you know, so this is an expression. That's an expression. This is an expression. All these are different expressions. Even this, which involves calling a function with an argument and and uh, extracting something from the reference it returns, that's a that's a, um, a, a, a a formula. That's an expression. Okay, um, and uh, these expressions um, are used throughout any logic. So if we pull up that model from this morning, um, uh, we'll we'll go here and uh, I'll close. We don't want to do the wind turbine model. Let's go, go open this model, smoking and heart disease. Um, this is actually one we had yesterday, I'm sorry. This is one I, I was building in, in this uh, very um, tutorial yesterday. Um, you go when we open this up, one of the things that we will see is that there's many, many places that any logic uses, um, uses expressions. An example would be here, the immigration event. Here's a rate it needs. I told you before, this is a value 
but this is an expression that computes that value. It says, go to this, go to me, and get my immigration rate. Um, here's another expression, right? Here's another here associated with, with these things. This is an expression. It computes a value. This is an expression. This is an expression here. This is actually a sub-expression. It's an expression used within this overall expression. And the same thing with these things. So there's expressions all around in any logic, um, uh, wherever we have you know, charts and, and timeouts are specified, um, there's an expression there, or associated with these rates. These are all these are all expressions. Some of the more more complex expressions, this again has a nice so little sub-expression associated with it, but they compute values. That's what their job is. Okay. And when we give those expressions, we don't need semicolons. That's one of the, the points to come away. So we have some common Java expressions, OK? Um, they all have many pieces in them, operators, things like plus, minus, divide, things where you say a dot b, um, where you're looking up a, a value or field or a reference within a reference to something. So, so here, for example, is I'm going to say, the initiation rate here is this, and within this, I'm going to ask for the initiation hazard by age. Within this, I'm going to ask for the current age. Those are sort of being looked up in a reference. This is a reference to myself, and I'm saying, go find this method and call that function. Okay. Um, we also saw this ternary operator. Do you remember where we saw that before? Where do we see this ternary operator? Yeah, so we were asking, like, is it male? If so, make it gray. Otherwise, make it yellow that first day. Um, uh, the first, or yesterday when we were doing the parameters, et cetera. Okay? Um, so there's lots of these kind of uh, operators, these things that occur, these kind of little um, uh, things that take values and they operate on them. They're part of expressions, okay? So greater than as an operator, equals as an operator, double equals, that tests if these two are equal. Uh, A less than or equal to B, less than or equal to as an operator, okay? Um, uh, so is, for that matter, plus and minus. Okay, um, now when you read expressions, you have to read them, learn how to read them um, to learn how, to, to understand their meaning properly. So here's an expression, and in here A gets evaluated first, and from A it asks, okay, get me the ith connected agent. Now, in computer science, I starts at zero, so the first one would be at index zero, second one would be at index one, third one would be at index two, and then when we call that, we'll get back a reference to some agent. You know, it's, it's my third connected, the third person I'm connected to. So maybe I is two. It's the third person I'm connected to. And I'll call to get the name for that agent. Their name is Joe. And it will evaluate length on Joe to get three. J-O-E. Okay? We routinely string these together. And it's called fluent form where we can sort of string them one after the other successively processing values. And you'll so see this a lot. Means? What's that? A dot means A is a reference to something. In this case, I happen to know it's a reference to an agent. So this is like our main. Sorry? A is like our main. Um, a here is actually just, it could be any reference to thing. It could be a variable. Like this morning, we had a variable um, that, that we said, remember destination city? We could say destination city dot get connected agent of zero and that would give us the first city that's connected to our destination or destination city dot popul uh, city population so here we're asking a whatever it is we're going to ask it's probably a variable it's a variable like destination city probably we're going to ask get me your connected agent so this is a reference to some agent saying that agent there and we could ask the by saying a dot get connected agent, we ask that agent there, tell me your connected agent number two or number one. Does that help? Okay. Um, now, this morning we further saw variable declarations. Now, you folks actually saw a sneak preview of this 
um, yesterday, right? Um, you saw a sneak preview of this when I clicked. Do you remember this thing? Um, here, I named each person in the population friend in turn. I don't know if you remember that, but um, that's what we did. Now, the model from this morning, we also had a variable introduced. It was called destination city. Do you remember that one? We, we had a destination city, um, and, and uh, here we go. I'm gonna go open it right now. And we'll go see, we had a variable called destination city. This is one way of a variable. We're saying, call each person in turn in amongst my connections friend. friend. This was from this morning. And we had person. And when we had person, we had migration event. And we introduced this variable called destination city. That was just a nice name for, for um, a randomly chosen city to which um, uh, next to my, my city. That's a neighbor of my city, uh, uh, connected to my city. So this is called a variable declaration. I'm introducing a variable called destination city here. And then I just refer to that variable. I could have gone and just substituted this in this case. Every time that occurred, I could have just put this there. I could have put this here. It, although in parentheses to make it clear, I could have put put this. I could have gone instead of saying destination city. I could have put this value. Um, this isn't always true, but in this case, because it didn't change, nothing is changing about it. I could have done it, but that would be really awkward. I'd keep on seeing this thing, and that thing means something. It's the destination city. Ooh, excuse me. It wouldn't have. It would only be the same if every time it returns the same agent. So actually, that wouldn't have worked too well. But um, here I give a nice name for it, the destination city, and I reuse. I reuse that. So this is my destination. Now that I know that's my destination, if it exists, then I'm going to go to it to join its population. I'll get you know random x location in it and a random y location in it and apply network. And I, again, I was wrong by saying you could just duplicate it because every time it can return a different random one. So we, we actually, it was important we named it with a variable. In many cases, it's just a convenience name, okay? So variable declarations, they provide a nice way of referring to this, but it's more than that. It's actually a location associated with it. Ladies and gentlemen, we could, for example, change later we could say if it's not equal to null, destination city equals city. And from then on, destination city w here will have been determined by the, this update. This is basically saying change the reference uh, associated with this variable to point to a different city, which, is, which, which um, means that it gets actually referencing another, another uh, city. It's, refer it's pointing to another city. Now, variables are associated with types. You can see this is a variable, and it's saying this type is city, okay? The type of this variable is city. What this means is this variable refers to things. It refers to an agent of type city. It cannot refer to anything else except null. The only thing it referred to is a city or null. It could not hold the value three. If I put this here, it would be an extremely unhappy camper because that's not a city. This can only hold references to cities. That's what it means to have this city here. It can only hold references to cities, okay? So that's why we say we give it a type. And if we give it a type city, it means it refers to a city, okay? Now, that city in principle could be the same city as this one refers to, but it refers to some city. Um, Okay, now variables are, are associated with types. We, we, we declare a variable and we specify what its type is at that time. Um, and in Java, the value associated with that variable can change over time. You can do different things to it. So for example, here, these are kind of convenience variables. I get my X location, I get my Y location, I, I get M to refer to main, I get sort of my current row, my current column, and, and then I use them subsequently, okay? Um, okay, 
Um, so we can assign two variables. We could say my age equals zero um, and, and change it. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip over given our, our limited time here. Um, uh, we can have multiple types of variables. Um, let me show you uh, another variable you introduced this morning. So we had migration event, but then we also had, um, we also had thought, okay, actually, no, we didn't do that today. We could have, when we define a function, there are times where we will specify what are called arguments to it. So like the sine function, it takes in an angle as an argument. So if this took in, if this function needed some information to do a job, maybe it needs an angle, I could say it takes an angle and that's a double. And then in its body, I could refer to the angle associated with it. In this case, you wouldn't want to do it, but the point is this is a variable. Angle is a variable. It's a special type of variable. It's one that's a, an argument. It's one that's a parameter of the function. Okay. Another type of, of, of variable was one that we saw we did see yesterday, and that was associated with this model, smoking and heart disease, particularly right with this thing, where we had this code, we had a variable associated with going over each of these connections and it named it friend. Okay, so each of them was in turn named friend. Let me show you something in, in any logic that will let you see some exa additional examples. If we go, ladies and gentlemen, to the model we had yesterday, we go to Maine, and we go to the population in Maine. And if we go to the statistics here, if we go to this and we say control J, you notice this is counting the set of smokers. How do we know whether someone's a smoker? We test this condition. So I told you that what it goes is through each person in the population, each person in, the, in this population, it goes through, it calls them item in turn, and it tests whether they're in that state, okay? I don't know if you remember, I did an animation of it, which Jeff, of which Jeff is rather fond. Okay, I said, okay, I'm the first person calling me item. I'm gonna test this. I'm now the second person calling me item. Now watch this. This is the interesting thing. Do control J, and it's gonna actually <coughs> show me the Java code behind this. It renders that into Java code. That's the Java code there. What is this Java code doing? Well, let's go see. You should be able to figure this out now. What is this line doing? What's, what, what, is, what purpose is that line accomplishing? It is, it is, declares a variable called val under bar value. Why do they be, make it under bar? Well, among other things, it's so that you have less likely to duplicate that name in your code. You're like, less likely to have that name in your code, okay? So it, it does this. Now let's see what this does. Then it goes through each person in the population calling them what? Item. And for that person, what is this doing? Can anyone see? What is that doing? I could put it up on the big screen. What, it, what, is, what is this doing? I'll, I'll, I'll prettify it. What is it doing? Okay, so this is actually just being used. So this is a variable that's holding the value returned by this. So, so we've, remember, we're going through each person calling them item, and then we're asking, are they in a certain state? What's the state, this one? And we're getting a Boolean from that. So this is just a variable declaration. There's another variable declaration of a variable called what? What's the variable called? underscore t. And then it tests, is underscore tree t true? In other words, was this item in this state? And if so, it increments that value. This is an expression. It makes this value, this variable, one bigger than it otherwise was. Okay? 
and I wish you didn't have to learn this, and, but you will see this. You never have to look at this cover, almost never, almost never. But, but ladies and gentlemen, this plus plus, you'll see places around, and it means make this val value, the value of this variable, one thing it was. And there's actually some, some ordering with which it does that that I'm not going to get into. But the point is that it increments it, makes it one bigger than it otherwise would. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, and then at the end of this, what does it return? What is it returning? As, as the result, as sort of the value of this function. When we call this function count smokers, what do we get back? The number of smokers, because that's what that is, right? That's the number for which this was true. In other words, the number of them where we had this thing true. That's what this statistic computes, right? Do you see that? That's what that unpacks into in, in Java, okay? And you can understand that because now you understand something about variables and, and, and how variables can be introduced and then something about how they can be used. So you'll note that in that code that we were just looking at, it wasn't pretty code. This is code generated by any logic automatically. And you'll notice that this value of this variable was first zero. And every time it went through the loop and the person did satisfy this criteria, this condition, it changed the value of that variable to make it one bigger. So if it looped through and there was just one time it was true, the value would be one. If it looped through the whole population, there were two times where this is true, the value would be two. It would, first go to, it would start at zero, it would go up to one after the first one, it would go up to two after the second, and then it would get all the way through and return two. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's, that's how that works. Values are variables, ladies and gentlemen, hold values, but those values can be updated. We can, we can assign them at first, but then we can update them like this. We could change my ethnicity or change my age or change my color. In fact, we did this. Where did we, ladies and gentlemen, in both these models, no less, I'm watching the time, I've got you folks covered, right? Um, where did we update a variable in both of these models with different linguistic conventions each time? Where did we update it? I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with the visual representation. Of this, what variable did it update? Uh, color. color. Changed it to lime. Remember that? Changed it to yellow. This is updating a variable. This is our variable. Hmm? Started as black and it got updated. So any logic has variables. And what do variables hold? They hold values. Okay? Um, expressions are these formulas that evaluate to values. Variables hold values. Okay. Um, okay. Not gonna um, go um, go into this. Suffice it to say that in in Java you have expressions that compute values, and an important subtype of those expressions are expressions that actually assign to values in the process. Here. This expression assigns to A. In other words, it puts a new value in A. This one puts lime, a reference to the color lime, into color. Color can hold references to colors. And here, we're assigning it a reference, ladies and gentlemen, to lime. We're assigning it a reference to the color yellow. We're assigning it a reference to the color red. Okay. That's one type of, of operator that, that um, it's, it's, a, it, it's a piece of an expression. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is another one. Plus equals, okay? Um, another one, times equals, divided by equals, minus equals. Let's talk about this, okay? Um, operate and assign, these are operate and assign. Um, Operator. So a times equals basically means a equals a times two. Hmm? 
a plus equals two means a equals a plus two. Now this is kind of convenient to write. You might think, why do I have to engage in such obscurity? Well, you don't have to. You could always write this. But if you have long names on both sides, it's the same darn long name on both sides, it's kind of easy to lose track of the fact that it's the same name on both sides. And you have to kind of read carefully, is it the same one on the left and right? If you just write, you know, um, uh, some long name plus equals two, you know, um, um, uh, number, um, number of children out of wedlock plus equals two. It's easier than reading number of children uh, equals number of children out of wedlock plus two, something like that. It's just easier to read, plus equals. Um, divide equals means you're dividing it by a quantity and updating this quantity. So all of these basically perform some operation on the, initial, on the current value and assign to the uh, assigned to the variable. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks very much. Um, okay, um, so that's good. These are extremely common, ladies and gentlemen. Kurt could testify to that. Um, a plus plus. You may have think of that as a grade, but in fact, um, this is a way of saying I want to increment, I want to add one to the current value of A. Add one and update A with that. So A becomes one bigger than it was before. Mm -hmm. Now, like all expressions, this actually has a value. This computes a value. This calculates a value. The result of this is a value. And what is that result? The result is the value before the increment. So if you say, if A is, if I said something like, watch this, don't, you don't have to do this, but watch this. If I said A equals zero, and I said, this would be bad style, but if I were to say um, the result of A plus plus equals and I were to say a plus, and I were to say a plus plus here. Print this out, or to make it less confusing, I'll I'll do these on two different lines, um, so you don't get confused by the preceding plus. If I said this, guess what would print out? Anyone? What would print out? Oh man, let's try it. Let's try it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not do it here. If you have that model open from yesterday, right here, let's, let's do it in there. Let's do it on this click. Watch this. We'll do it on this on click, right? Here we go. We'll put, do it right after this. A equals zero. The result of A plus plus equals, and we'll, we'll print it out. And then we'll say A, A now equals, and I'm going to print out what A equals, and I'm going to say A. Did it get debugged? Uh, yeah. Good. Getting a lot of help. Thanks. Happy news. Okay. That's great. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to run this now. What do you think the value of this is going to print out? Anyone? Wow. It's going to print out... Read this returns the current value of A, but increments it by one immediately thereafter. So this, if we have A equals three, A plus plus evaluates to three, but A will then be four. So, so what do you think the value of this is? What do you think is gonna be printed out here? If A is zero, and I say, print out A plus plus, what do you think it'll be? Zero. It'll be zero. Now, what do you think will print out here? One, You're darn right. You're bang on, folks, bang on. So that's the meaning of plus plus. Now, in general, I strongly advise against depending on the value of A plus plus. It's, it's considered by my, uh, mumble, okay. By my, we should say int, int A, sorry. Um, by my token, 
depending on the value of is is is, is going to be something that's inadvised. But it is an expression and it has a value. Just you shouldn't be depending on it um, uh, on a regular basis. Um, in older times, people would do that a lot. These days, it's considered um, uh, it's considered uh, not so no so wise to do that. So, but I could go back and look. Here, here we go. Um, we'll go back and look. Look at that. The result of a plus plus equals zero. A now equals one. So, so actually, this returns the current value of a, but then immediately after that, it makes it one larger. Um, and meanwhile, plus plus a immediately increases it and then returns the new value. Don't depend on these. Don't use these as as values to then compute more values as a general rule. You can use them on a line by themselves. For example, that what I showed you earlier, this thing here, um, oh, now it's gone. Oh, we're it only so. Here we go. Um, so we'll go, um, this was in smoking and data, and here are the agents, here we go. Okay, I'm watching the time. And, and here we were. And if I do control J, okay, boom. Mm. This is how plus plus should properly be used in my mind. And a separate line by itself. Here you're not actually checking what its value is, you're just using it to increment it, make it one bigger, which is useful. Okay, um great. Um so I said yesterday. When we have references, um, um, those references, we can, if I have a variable, it holds a value that happens to be a reference to something else. And I can assign that variable to a new reference or point to something else. It doesn't hurt the original reference. It's not like the original reference is now damaged. It just points to something different. It's just referring to something different. So I could say a dot mother equals so and so and then a dot mother equals somebody else but um, it doesn't affect what what was referred to before it just now a dot mother no longer refers to that thing so so here um, maybe at start a refers to this and m refers to this and here's the population if I say a dot mother equals m I'm going to refer, okay, this mother with A, so A refers to this person. After, if I say after A dot mother equals M, now it refers to M, okay? Whatever M refers to, now this refers to. Notice both of them are referring to the same person here. Just like I could say, you know, Cheryl's university president is the same as my university president. We're both referring to the same person. Osgood's university president is the same as Waldner's university president. Um, okay. Um, these both refer to the same person. So at first, A didn't have a mother assigned, so it was null, and referred to nobody in particular. Now, after this, it refers to M. Now, after we say a dot mother equals get this dot get main. These days you could say main dot population two. That's zero, one, two. Now A mother refers to this. M still refers to this one. Um, it'll be as if, you know, um, you know, we had a colleague and they, they moved to Dalhousie and you know, our Cheryl and my's president stays the same person, Peter Stoichev, but they've moved to to um, Dalhousie, so their president is Florizone, and and that doesn't change Peter Stoichev. He's still Cheryl and my's president. So M is still referring to this. That's not changed. This person has not changed. It's just now A's mother is now referring to this rather than referring to that. So we can. In short, update it. So when we have variables, or when we have fields, this is called a field within this. It functions like a variable within whatever A refers to. This is a field. It's kind of like a variable within A. Um, 
This this can this can hold no refer a reference to nothing called null. That's a certain type of value, or it can hold a value that is a reference specifically. And here it's a reference to this particular person. Okay. Now, once again, when we had code. When we declare a variable, we are specifying what possible universe of values, what's the universe of values from which this variable can hold values. Variables, ladies and gentlemen, hold value. They're, they're storage locations for values. And so t holds a value. And what is that value? It's something of type Boolean. So the fact that it's a, it can hold a Boolean value indicates it can only hold two values. What are those values? True and false. Um, meanwhile, in our code, and so like the fact that this can hold an integer, this is any logic generated code that you should never have to look at, or virtually never. Um, this this is a variable. It can only hold what sort of values? Integer values. So it can hold minus one, zero, one, minus two, two, minus three, three, etc. Let's go look at some more. That one we created this morning in person. Here we go. Migration event. We created this thing called destination city. This is a variable. It holds values. What sort of value, because variables hold values. What sort of values does this hold? It holds references to cities. It can refer to any particular city or it can refer to null. Those are the only values it can hold. These are, in, it refers to instances of the class cities. Thank you. So these are, it holds values, and each of those values is a reference to an instance, an object of the class city. Um, or it can hold null, which means no particular city. So, so it can refer to particular instances of person, well, in this case it would be of city, um, or it could refer to, to null. For example, this can just say null. It doesn't refer to any particular city. Um, and that would occur if, like, if I said, my city has no connected agents, it might hold the value null. So this, this doesn't refer to anything. Okay. So yes, this ref when we say this holds values, variables hold values, regardless of whether or not it's a city or you may recall we introduced a variable elsewhere. It was in um, it was in city in a function there. Get random x location in city. We introduced this, and here's a variable. What sort of values can it hold? Double precision values. That delineates a set of all possible values it could hold. It's something from the universe of doubles. That other one we saw here holds something from all possible, it, it can only hold ref values that are references to instances of, to objects of type city, of class city, um, or it can hold null. What is the, the city with ah. around it? What is that? Yeah. Typecasting. It's, it's called typecasting. Type and it's an unfortunate, it's an ugly fact here. And I'm watching because your folks are going to have to get going to the bus soon very, very soon here. So the deal is, the deal is that, that sometimes, almost always computers are dumb. Computers are dumb. So when you call get random connected agent, it doesn't know that it returns a city. Hey, I, I have the cities are only connected to cities, okay? But it does, it's not smart enough to know that. So if I go look under get random, Okay, come on. Uh, connected agent. It returns an agent. Oh, 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 oh. That's horrible. Okay. Um, so, so this mumble. Um, okay. Um, Merlin. Yeah. Linux. Sucks. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> so it, it clipped it again. Did. Yeah, it's when I come back from suspend. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so here, uh, can you see it now? Yeah, um, I just had to run my shell script. All right. Linux. Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
you notice it returns an agent. I happen to know it's a city that it returns, but it doesn't know that. All it knows is it's some sort of agent. So I have to tell it, hey, look, look, it's a city, okay? Just treat it like a city. If I didn't do that, it would complain. It would, it would say, I don't know, it's not a city, it's, it's an agent, I do. Um, I'm just saying basically, trust me, it's a city. Yeah, you can verify it, it will verify it when it's actually running. But if I didn't do that, it would say, cannot convert. Now, in fact, I know every city, every darn thing that's connected with a city in this model, everything that's in a network with a city is a city. I know that, it's not smart enough to know that. So I said, just treat it as a city. Now it turns out we don't have to do that. And this is one of the more advanced things that I could have done this morning, but I didn't. But, but here, I could have said cities are only connected with other cities. I could have gone to city, gone to connections, and said they're only connected with cities, okay? Now, if I go do that, it is going to still it's going to okay so let's go back to that migration event um and now suppose i were to strip this away it's still going to complain now i believe i don't think that's going to immediately solve it for my my recollection but what i could do is do city dot connections dot randomly connected agent and now it goes, oh, cities are only cities, and it's a happy camper. Because now it knows, get random connected agent, get random, okay, and, hey, oh, man, come on, um, get ran, oh, man, can't you give me the, oh, man. Um, I was hoping it would show me the, uh, the information showing that it knows it, it only can be connected to, to cities. But now it clue, is clued into the fact that cities are only connected with cities. So um, so that, that allows it to sort of behave more intelligently. So if I say this and I say, get random connected agent, it'll give me back a city. So it's a confusing thing, but we're gonna talk about it more the day after, on, on either tomorrow, late tomorrow or the day after tomorrow on Friday. Basically, in Java, there's a notion of a hierarchy of types. All cities are agents. All agents are, in fact, a broader class of things, too, objects. But, but all cities are agents. So any city is an agent. Any person is an agent. Any deer is an agent. Any doctor is an agent. They're all instances of agents, and they can be treated generically as agents, much as you might say cardiologist, and neurologist, the nephrologist, the GP, they're all doctors. And we can have things that operate on doctors. But you gotta get going if you wanna take the bus. The bus could toot its horn any time. Okay, so, so that was a little bit of a confusing thing, but if I wanted to, if I wanted to eliminate that so-called cast, I could do it just by being careful in the city to say cities are only connected with cities. And it would, it would mean I didn't have to clarify it. Yeah, it's a city, trust me. Here, here we're saying all cities are connected only with cities, and that allows us to avoid the need to, to say, trust me, this is a city that's returned. I don't know if that's helpful at all. But that, that thing in parentheses means, trust me, it's a city. And it will actually check when it's running, but it won't be able to confirm it before it runs. So it won't be able to catch potential errors. But in this case, it's being overly, over, playing it overly safe because computers are pretty dumb. Okay. Okay. Um, those are my comments on expressions in Java variables. So values are irreducible quantities in Java like these. Expressions compute values. These are all expressions. They evaluate to a value. They calculate a value. They compute a value. We use different words. And even a call is something that's an expression that compute, can compute a value. Um, a method call. We could call f of 2 with 3 and it will return 5 or something like that. This is a method call 
this is an expression, this is an expression, this thing is an expression, this thing is an expression, and each of them return values. A returns a reference to some agent. A dot get connected agent of I returns a reference to some agent. We ask for its get name that returns a reference to a string, and, and then we ask for that string, what, um, what's your length? And that will return a value, three, for Joe. So values are these irreducible quantities. Expressions compute values, and we see them throughout any logic um, all the time. We are writing these expressions, and you never need semicolons for expressions. These things that compute values, you do not need semicolons for. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about semicolons with commands with things called statements. For these, you don't ever need a semicolon um, associated with them. And finally, variables hold values and can be updated over time as, as values are computed, hence this sort of thing. Um, this value, this held a value, zero at first, as it went through this loop, one by one by one, each time it was true, it updated that value to be one bigger, and then it returned the end, which therefore boils down to the count of things for which this was true. That's how that works. Values, expressions, variables. And we introduced many variables in the course of the day like this. Mostly we're using the values as shorthand for, for computations um, or, or because you want to get one particular one and then continue to use it. This, we got a random connected agent and then we used it here. So this was a variable that we were using, even though we only updated it, we only created it once, it meant we didn't have to recompute it every time, which is good because it was randomly generated. Okay, is that helpful? Ubiquitous. These things are throughout. If you can understand this, you're doing pretty well. And um, these are sort of the most common things you use in any logic. Just be aware that there's a, there's a few unusual ways of giving values. Um, one of them is this thing. This is like an if-else expression. Um, to test equality, we use A equals equals B, not A equals B. What would A equals B mean? Assignment. I mean, the value of A is clobbered by B, meaning whatever value was in B now is put into A. It, it overwrites A. It, whatever A contained before is squashed, and it's replaced by whatever value was in B. Maybe B, B held a, a, a reference to, uh, uh, to some person, and if we say A equals B, not double equals, but A equals B, then A would now contain the reference to that person, and contain a reference to that person as well. But if we say A equals equals B, it returns true or false. It's testing, are they, are they equal? Are they referring to the same thing? Or for double precision values and integers, sort of basic things, do they hold the same value exactly? This is A less than or equal to, you can have A greater than or equal to. Dereferencing here, A needs to be Cornelio, A needs to be a reference to some object, and A dot B means with that reference, get the thing B within whatever this refers to. So if it's person, you know, um, uh, if it's uh, down here, um, you know, this dot color, it's get color within me, or get ethnicity within this person P, okay? That's what that dot thing means. Um, and we'll also use that to call things, right? We'll say this dot get main. So it calls get main on whatever's in this. Um, that's uh, that's uh, pretty pretty common, that sort of thing. So it call get connected agent with a particular argument on A. Um, good. Um, this means and. So we're testing is a gr x greater than or equal to zero and is x less than or equal to 500? In other words, is it between zero and 500 inclusive? Um, exclamation point means not. Not x, this thing within parentheses means 
in short, x is outside this range. So is this thing true? And then it reverses it. If this thing is true, not if that is false. If this thing is false, none of it is true. Okay. Um, so, so we might ask, is it not equal to? Um, an important thing mm, right here, A not equal to B. We saw that. Where did we see that? Something like that. Where did we see that? We wrote it ourselves. Right there. Destination city not equal to null. That is the same, ladies and gentlemen, as writing, as writing something like not A equals B. That's the same, same thing. A not equal to B is the same as not of this. If this thing is true, not of it is false. If this thing is false, not of it is true. Same thing with A, A not equal to B yields the same results. Okay. Now generally, as a matter of style, we write these things with a bit of space in between them because it's hard to read without it. So we'll write something like this. Um, okay, um, good. Uh, this is, if this is an array, we'll look up the 21st element in it. it starts at zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera. Um, some occasionally we'll see that in any logic. It's kind of rare. Um, uh, I don't think we'll need to do that. Okay, yeah, variables. There's several types of variables. We'll encounter it. But basically, we use variables as shorthand for values or to update them over time as we count things. Okay? And again, I argued with references. When we update a reference, when we set this reference to something else, it doesn't harm it, just as Cheryl and my university president wouldn't be affected by a calling to go into Dalhousie. Okay, so that's it. Hope that's helpful. Um, any questions? Yes? So, okay, a variable is a location that holds a value, okay? So, a variable is kind of like a box where a value is stored, okay? So I'm gonna have a variable, let's, let's look at an example of it. Um, here's a variable destination city, okay? Or better yet, just because it's up. Uh, it, 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 let's look at this one over here. Here's a value called, a variable called value. Okay, that's confusing. Okay. Um, so this is called underbar value. Okay. I wish they didn't have that this example. But okay. So this is, this is a location, and it holds some particular value. At first, what does this hold? What value does it hold at first? Zero. Zero. This, this is a value. Particular irreducible thing. It can't be reduced further. It's a quantity. It holds, holds this. Now, um, over time, as this runs, this will get incremented to one. We'll hold the value one. Get incremented to two. We'll hold the value two. Get incremented to three. As as it goes through here and find people who are smokers, right? Those. This is this is a location. It's like a box which holds this value. And over time, this value that's in there gets changed, okay? So that's for this sort of variable, right? An integer variable. Now, how is it different for this one over here, um, for this one, which is, which is a, called destination city? Destination city. Um, how is it any different? Well. Here, this, this had numbers in it, right? It had an actual number stored in it. Here, what's actually stored in it is a reference to some city, right? Maybe it's Washington, D.C. and it has a pointy point, right? Um, and, you know, here's the capital bill. Right. Um, okay, so this is a reference to a city, okay, which is here. Now, later, I might go on. Now, I don't have it here. But here it's assigned once. Just I put that value in there and then I just use it. But but maybe if I expanded my code or whatever, maybe I'd say, oh, if there's 
Oh, yeah, this would be great, right? Oh, it would be beautiful. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, oh, that would be nice. It will illustrate it really well. Watch this. If I had, if I had this like that, and I said, if destination city, watch this. Oh, it's <laughs> beautiful didactically. Okay, um, thank you for asking. Um, if destination city equals null, then I'm going to pick destination city equals main dot, uh, what is it called, cities dot get, get, um, oh man, I, I have to do uh, random from, okay, um, there's, there's a bit from, from in here, random, random, random. So in other words, if I don't have a neighbor, if my city doesn't have a neighbor, that's, in other words, if I ask, get me, a, get me the neighbor of my, get me a random neighbor of my city, and it returns null, it says, oh, I don't have one, no, no such one, then, then I'm going to, ooh, not minus, equals, I could say, well, okay, in that case, put in here, if this thing is null, pick a random city, from the set of all in the population. You see that? Okay, so, so here, um, if this thing held the value null, which I'll write by convention like this, if it had the value null, um, uh, then maybe initially it has the value null um, because I, I called this and it returned null. And then, and then I test, is it null? If so, yes. I'll point it to a random city, and I happen to point it to Washington, D.C., right? Um, now it holds a reference to Washington, D.C. And now maybe later, for whatever reason, you decide to point it to another fine city, which has another pointy building in it called the Delta Vesper. Right? Okay, and it, and it has a little thing up top, and sometimes smoke comes out in the way. Um, and, and now, later, you update it to, to reference that. These are values. The references themselves are values. They're, they just happen to reference off to things like Washington, D.C. or Saskatoon, right? Um, okay, and um, they're held in a variable. Um, you can have references without variables, no problem. I mean, all the time, I'm, I'm using references without uh, without variables. Um, for example, um, uh, I might I might ask. Well, here here's a here's a reference without a variable. Right 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 uh, here. Let's let's go. Here's a reference without a variable. So um, a is in a variable. Let's say okay. So that's stored in some variable. It's associated with some variable. Okay, now, but if we say a dot get connected agent of two, for example, that will return a value. What type of value is it that it returns? Let's go check. Watch, watch this. Watch this. If I say get random, or if I say, you know, city dot get connected agent, and I give it a number, guess what I get back? An agent, okay? Get back a referent. When I say get back an agent, I, I do abuse to the class. What I mean is I get back a reference to an agent, a reference to an instance of an agent. If I really want to be very clear about it, I get back a reference to an instance. This is a reference to an instance of a city. Washington, D.C. is an instance of a city. South, this here is an instance of a city. It's Saskatoon. It's a particular type of city. And they differ a little bit, in case you didn't notice. But, um, um, but they're both, uh, they both share characteristics of cities, um, the features of cities, the processes of cities, and so they're both instances of city. But if I say a dot get connected agent of i, I get back a reference to an agent. And then I can say get name, and I get back a reference to a string. Because the name is string, it's a Washington DC. I get back a, a reference to a string, and those there's no variables along there. It's just um, it's just a reference. It's a value, just like I got back three, or I got back 
you know, um, uh, minus 4.2 or something like that. Those are just values. They're not stored in a location. A, a variable is a location that stores values. But you can have values. In fact, the vast majority of values circulating Java aren't stored in a location. They're just sort of passed, they're just sort of computed along. I don't know if I, I'd say that. A lot of them are, anyway. I don't know if I'd say the vast majority. But a lot of them are never stored in a location. They're just passed along um, uh, as, as part of computations, returned from functions, added things to them. And they're never actually put in a location. A, a variable is associated with a location to store values. But there's a lot of values that never live in a location. They just use on an ongoing basis, just like, you know, um, uh, I don't. I don't know what a good analogy is, but um, I may. Uh, I may never. Um, you know, like. A, you know, like a. Um, uh, a trunk can be used to store blankets, but I could have a blanket that never lives in a trunk. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, that analogy doesn't go over very well. Or, or you know, I could. Um, I could. I could have a tire that never goes on a car. Uh, it just it's never used in, in a car. Um, maybe it's used, uh, you know, for some sort of art exhibit or something. Okay, those aren't very good, good analogies. Sorry, um, but anyway, var variables are locations that store values, but values are more basic concept. Okay, and there's actually languages that you will be learning uh, this fall, like Scala, which have plenty of values that never live in a variable. Variables are special types of things in Scala when you need to update something. But if you just want a short name for something, you just call it a value. It's, it's, it, you give a name to this value. You never actually have it live in a variable. And that's perfectly acceptable. So references, like other types of values, don't have to live in variables. They can circulate. This is a reference. What, what's returned from this is a reference that never lives in a variable. What's returned from this is a reference to a string that never lives a value, because as soon as it's produced, it's consumed by length, and it determines the value of three. Is that, is that helpful at all? So if you want to call it again right away, or if you want to evaluate it longitudinally over time, or something mm. like that, then you would want to Correct. Correct. You want to remember it. Like, that's referring to a specific kind of That's referring to a specific um, integer. So, um, so I was probably set to some integer. It could be like okay. three. Okay. Um, that maybe that would be less confusing. So, so I was a, just a, a variable that held, holds a value. And when we say I, it says, oh, what value does it have? And it will, and it will use that. Um, so um, unfortunately, the spacing of this is gotten a bit screwed up now but um, but yeah that's uh, um, that I is just it's it, it was a sort of placeholder for a for a value yeah um, so when it sees a value or it sees a variable name it just it's something like this but it's just using a, its its value it just reads its value and and uses it but Charles exactly right when do we need a variable well the fact is, the rude fact, and, and it's, it's an ugly fact, is that Java forces you to have variables when you don't really need a variable. All you need is a nice name for a value. Like this, double x equals get x. I just want a short name for my x location, and I want to call it x here. But in Java, the only way I can do that is to create one of these dumb sort of, uh, one of these dumb, um, Location, it's called a variable. But I'm at, I don't need to update it ever. I'm not going to change it. But that's, that's where they live in Java. A variable is used for a short name for it. Um, in a language like Scala, you would actually call this a value. You would say val x equals this thing. And, and it's clear, you're not, you're not planning to update it. And then if you want it to be updated, you would say val, var x equals that. Yes? So this. Okay, this is a this is going to function as a constant. Now, you can in Java say const. It's a const construct to actually say something is a constant. 
That's uh, a more advanced thing I'm not going to cover today, okay? But you can, in fact, in Java, distinguish between things that are constants and not. And in fact, a good Java so-called compiler will figure out this is constant. It's just that when I look at this code here, which was given to me, I didn't write this, um, uh, this, um, uh, this, this, it's not clear to me, is this really need to be a variable? Um, but yes, yeah, Cheryl, when would you need to make it a variable? Well, take a look at this, Cheryl. Take a look at this one here. Um, this, this is something where we need it to be a variable. Why not? Suppose we had gone and, and substituted this in. I started to mistakenly say we could substitute it in. We could put anywhere we had destination city, we could, re we could put that. Wrong. Why is that wrong? Because every time it's going to return a different randomly connected agent. So I need to like compute it once and remember it subsequently. Do you see what I'm saying? I need to remember it here, here, here. It, the, referring to the same destination city. So Cheryl, that's one reason. Or if I need to follow it over time, or I needed to sort of keep track of it successively in some way, or if I needed to update it and count and increment it every time I see something or change it whenever I see a certain condition. Here, you know, I did it, right? I computed it, and then I say, well, under this condition, use a random city. There, I, I actually need a variable because I'm updating it, I'm setting it. Note, notice the distinction between these two. Um, this is equals equals. I'm testing, is the destination city hold the value null? Does the variable destination city, the location associated with it, hold the value null? Um, here, I'm actually assigning to it. I'm saying, you know, this value, whatever this gives, put it in this, this location associated with the variable um, destination city. Um, so I'm actually updating it. I'm changing what's here to point and set to the fine city of Saskatoon. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that's, that's what we're, um, that's how we're using this variable here. Here it's being updated, here it's being read, here it's being, its value is being used, here its value is being used, here its value is being used, here its value is being used, and here, ladies and gentlemen, its value is being used. Okay, other questions? So values are like the most, most essential thing in Java. And I would actually say, ladies and gentlemen, that you should leave this room proud. Values are, in my view, one of the most fundamental concepts in computer science. Uh, they're the concept we use to build whole programming languages around its own. And if you can understand that, you've, you've got to some of the essence of what makes a programming language, and you could learn other programming languages that would be, that, and they're, they're centered around values very commonly. Okay? This value's about the results of computation as a value. And an expression expresses a computation that returns a value. And when we have functions, I should have said this, you know, I should have emphasized it before. When we have functions, take a look at all these functions that are supported here. This returns value. This doesn't return anything. We say it returns void. It doesn't return anything. It just does something. It delivers something. Here, disconnected returns a value. Disconnect from agent returns a value. This returns a city. This returns a list of connections. These are all values that it returns. It, when I say it returns a list, I mean it returns a reference to an instance of a list. So it returns a reference to something that, that is a, an instance of list. This returns an integer. This returns a reference to an instance of city. Okay, so when I say it returns a city, Really what I mean is returns a reference to an instance of class city, an object of class city, okay? That's, that's what this means. And, and you can see they're very handy. And because they return references to these things, I could chain them together. I could say get connected agent, you know, with a certain index. And then I could say got connected agent for that. I could ask for its connections. I could ask how many, how many, um, what is the number of their connections, and so on, okay? Just like I did here. I got this, this is a reference, I called this, it gets back another reference, I asked for the name of that, it returns a reference to a string, 
and and then I can ask for its length. Helpful? Valuable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope it wasn't too variable. Um, <laughs> okay, grateful for your comments. Um, anything else I can help with question-wise? I wish I could show you a nicer programming language. Java is pretty good. It's a lot better than we were doing 10 years ago, 20 years ago, um, as an average language. Eh, a lot better than 20 years ago. Um, but, um, but there's nicer languages, yeah. And I wish I could show them to you. I have secret designs to show them to Cheryl. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other, other things? Okay. So, um, it's almost 7 o'clock. Let's uh, go home and, and rest, and I'll see you at uh, a bit before 9 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you so much for your patience, and I'll try to upload this. I'm behind in the uploads. I'll try to get through a batch tonight, okay, a bolus.